text is section 2.7. We are in section 2.7. We are uh, calculating the potential of a spear with the boundary conditions uh, set to be v on the top half and minus v on this on the bottom half. The potential can be solved by using the green function. So finally, what we got is uh, phi at x is uh, given by this formula. You have the potential v times a is the radius of the sphere, and the x squared minus a squared over 4 pi integrating d5 from d5 pi from 0 to 2 pi and then the for the theta integration becomes d cosine theta pi I'm treating cosine theta pi as a variable and then there are two terms one is x square x square plus a square minus 2ax cosine gamma to the minus 3 half power the minus x square plus a square plus 2ax cosine gamma to the 3 half power okay so uh, the cosine fate cosine gamma related to the, as to the spherical angle as uh, cosine theta, cosine theta pi plus sine theta sine theta pi cosine phi pi minus phi. Okay, so that uh, gamma is the angle between the vector x and x pi. So that's the relationship. So this integration is uh, generally quite complicated because of this dependency. So a simple case we have already done is uh, setting theta to zero. So get rid of this term, this becomes one and this becomes uh, cosine theta pi. So cosine gamma becomes cosine theta pi. So this integration is trivial. And we did that uh, in class. So, um, uh, so that's not difficult, but the, the general solution is difficult, but uh, we can, instead of getting a closed form, we can get a serious expansion for the general solution, basically doing expansion. And because uh, for this problem, this is the exterior problem, X is the, basically is the radio position. So X is always greater than A. Okay, so an x squared plus a squared, you can see that it's always greater than two a times x. So we can define a small parameter so that we can do an expansion. So the, suppose that the, the series should converge for any theta and phi. So that give you a formal solution, although the, the expansion will get more and more complicated if you take a high and high order terms. So we'll just stop at the two terms in the expansion, but just, just illustrate the process. Okay, so um, the, the small parameter will uh, we'll use uh, the first, first step will be just using this ratio to AX divided by x squared plus a squared. So that is, uh, I think, define alpha, define as actually ax, just ax divided by x squared plus a squared. So this would be a small parameter. Okay. So because x is uh, larger than a, so actually two ax we also divided by x squared plus a squared will, will also be less than one. So we can do the expansion this way. So, uh, so finally you rewrite that into alpha. So basically pull out this uh, 
x squared plus a squared to the negative three half power out. So, so that uh, equals to a x squared minus a squared for four pi. So pull the x squared plus a squared to the three half power out. So this two term becomes a one minus two alpha cosine gamma negative three half minus one plus two alpha cosine gamma minus three half. Okay. Separation here. Okay, so uh, because now two alpha is a small parameter, we can do a binomial expansion. And you notice that uh, there's a negative sign here and there's a plus sign here, and then you subtract the two. So we see that uh, all the even all the terms when they do the expansion will cancel, like the even all the term one will cancel with one. Okay, so, and then all, all the term you add, add the two together. Okay, so you have, uh, uh, you have this, this one, and the two terms will be the same. So this one, this first order term and this first order term will add up to be two of them. And then the third order term we also add up. So we keep up to first order term is, and third order term. Okay, and so, that's why that uh, just uh, let's just write down the ex expansion here. So let's uh, don't repeat the uh, factor in front. Just write down the expansion. So the first order term cancels. So the uh, the zero order term cancels. So the third order term becomes two of the first order term. The first order term will be a minus three half. The fact the, the ex exponent times the factor minus two alpha cosine gamma. Okay, so this is the first order term. Okay. And the second order term, uh, if we can, so the third order term becomes plus two divided by minus three half and minus three half minus one is minus five half minus one against a minus seven half. And this is third order term is divided by three factorial, which is six. Okay, and then minus two alpha cosine gamma to the third power. Okay, and so now you simplify that. So this becomes a uh, Minus sign cancel, two cancel becomes uh, six alpha. Cosine gamma, the first term is six alpha cosine gamma. The second term you have, uh, now you have three times negative sign cancel, all the negative sign cancel, so you have uh, two and the three times three cancel with the six, and then you have two on top, so you have three, two here, so you, the denominator is four, and then the numerator is five times seven, so it's 35. Well, actually, I, I should say this is two, three of them, three powers, so actually cancel all the two, okay? Cancel all the two, okay? in here and then two times three is six, six cancels if it's six. Okay, just only 35 left, so actually press 35. All the negative sign cancel, 35 alpha cube, cosine cube, gamma. Okay, so that is uh, after the binomial expansion. So you see that the, uh, this integration, now you, you need to do this integration over uh, 
in the in the grand proportional to cosine gamma the first term and then cos proportional cosine gamma cubic factor in the second term so we need this to integral so work this out separately so uh, so the first ones d5 pi d cosine theta pi cosine gamma is uh, just uh, Cosine gamma is just what we have here. So you have cosine theta, cosine theta pi, cosine theta, sine theta pi, cosine phi pi minus phi. Okay. Now the second term, because of this cosine term, cosine phi pi minus phi is uh, a odd order of this cosine function and you integrate five pi from zero to two pi. So that will uh, get the second term to zero. So the second term is zero. So the first term is just a cosine theta pi and you, you integrate cosine theta pi so it becomes cosine square theta pi divided by two and evaluate from the limit zero to one, you get one half. So that, was, that you get one half, but then you integrate uh, Cosine at d phi pi get two two pi so all together would be pi times cosine theta. That would give you pi times cosine theta. Okay, so that is uh, trivial. So then the next one a little, a little bit space here. So integrate zero to one d. Cosine theta pi, no, t theta pi. So gamma cube, so only well, cosine gamma cube, we already have that one. So we need to take a cubic factor of this cosine, cosine gamma. Now we already know that the order, odd order cosine phi pi minus phi function will uh, vanish by the integrating over over five pi, okay. So we only keep the only keep the even order in cosine five pi. So so the even order is uh, the first is just the cubic factor of the first factor. So you have cosine cubic factor cosine cube cosine theta cube and cosine cube theta pi okay so that's the this first term and then the the other term is uh you have two of this square of this one times uh, one factor of this so you have plus three times cosine theta cosine theta pi and then sine square theta, sine square theta pi, and then cosine square phi pi minus phi. Okay, so that's the second term. Cosine cube gamma will give you this one. And now this integration again, uh, this is the power of cosine theta pi, and then you integrate cosine theta pi. So this integration will give you one fourth. Okay, and then uh, you have uh, two pi for the five pi integration. So two pi over four it will be pi over two. So this will give you pi over two and cosine cubic theta. So that's the first term. And the second term, the five pi integration, now you integrate from zero to two pi of d five pi, and you have cosine square. So that one, that integration is will give you uh, one half times two pi, so we give you pi. So this integration will give you pi. So plus, so you have three pi cosine theta. 
and sine square theta. So now what is left is cosine theta pi and sine square theta pi. Okay, the sine square theta pi is one minus cosine square theta pi. So the first term is just cosine theta pi and the integration, we have already done that. Uh, we'll give you one half. The second term, second is cosine, second term is cosine cube theta pi. We already all, also have done that. We'll give you one fourth. Okay, so that is minus one fourth. Okay, so that will give you finally uh, add everything together. We have pi, uh, pi over uh, your cosine cubic factor. Uh, I think one thing you can do is uh, this cosine square theta also becomes one minus cosine square theta. So, so all together you have uh, three, three pi, right? Three pi minus, this is minus, so one half uh, minus, uh, now this is, first you get, you get this factor, right? This factor has become one fourth. So this is uh, three pi over four, okay? And then, uh, then, then this is uh, one half, and then, uh, pi, so the first one becomes just one. So you have pi over four, get the pi over four out. The first one is just this cosine theta, or you take the cosine theta out. The cosine theta out. Okay, there's one fourth, the first cosine theta, you, you take a cosine theta out. So this, then the, the next term is you have a three, three fourth minus, uh, one half will give you another one fourth. So this is uh, just one. Uh, this is the first time is three because you have three here, three minus one fourth. So this is three. Minus one fourth of cosine square theta. Okay, three minus. So that's, uh, that's the second uh, term by right? integrating cosine q gamma. So now you can substitute this two and multiply by these two factor into this integration. So you can just write it out explicitly. So phi will be just, uh, just keep everything first. Okay. Phi will be V times A x squared minus a squared, four pi x squared plus a squared, three half. So the first term, we have pi cosine theta. The second term also have pi cosine theta. Okay, so you can get this pi cosine theta out. Pi cosine theta out. Okay, and the first term is six alpha. So you have six alpha. Okay, six. And alpha is just this factor a x divided by x squared plus a squared. Okay, and okay, so that is uh, that is right. And the second one has uh, this 35, right? Have this 35 a cubed, so it's a x over alpha cube, x squared plus a squared cubic factor. That's alpha cube, and then this integration 
So pi cosine theta is already taken out. So you have uh, one fourth of three minus cosine square theta. Okay, so of course you are high order term. Let's see if uh, we got it correctly. So Yep. And one thing you can do is take the take this factor out and uh, change it to one and then uh, you get uh, the answer in your textbook, but uh, we don't have to do that. Uh, this is also a valid form for the solution. Okay, so that uh, gives you a, a formally a serious expansion solution. But uh, of course, we only evaluate up to two terms. So for the full solution, you, have, uh, you need uh, many more terms especially when this is not exactly small for X is really much larger than A, you can just keep the first few terms. So, all right, so that, uh, that should be able, I mean, this, this is a valid answer, but uh, Jackson has another expansion. Instead of using expansion in power of this alpha factor, which is complicated, so ax divided by x squared plus a squared. Another expansion factor you can do is a over x, simply a over x, because x is always greater than a, so a over x is also a small prime, and then you can do that, use that to do expansion also. So, and of course you can start over and do that expansion instead of using alpha, you use a over x as your expansion factor, and go through that again. But uh, once we have this one, we can also, um, just by expanding this expansion using this A of A's as, uh, as a small prime. But as it turns out, we can, uh, instead of using epsilon, define as A squared over X squared. Uh, because everything you see there is uh, in power of epsilon. Use that as a small parameter to expand this one. So, what you have is uh, so first you pull this out outside, pull this factor outside, okay, and so you pull six out. So six divided by four is three half. So you have three half. You have three. So you have a. Uh, a, a squared of X, and then uh, put this factor out, you have X squared plus A squared to the five half factor. And that if you are, uh, if you pull the X or the X squared or X squared factor out of the denominator and numerator, then uh, you, you can uh, do the division. A, whenever you see A squared divided by X squared, you change that to epsilon. So, so you have a times a, a is a squared, so you have an x on here. And pull the x, x squared out, so you have one minus epsilon, the second factor. So you have cosine theta. So all the pi cancel. So the denominator become one plus a, one plus epsilon to the five half, because you already get this factor out. So inside the bracket is one and then a plus, you have a 35 divided by, because you pull out the six, you have a 24, so 35 over 24. And you only have two factor of the ax divided by x squared plus a squared. And again, you pull out x squared, so so the denominator is just epsilon. The numerator is uh, one plus epsilon square. Okay. And then you multiply by three minus cosine square theta. All right, so this is, uh, 
this is what the uh, expansion looks like. And then, uh, I mean, I mean the form in terms of epsilon using the epsilon as expansion parameter. Then you can do the expansion using epsilon as a small parameter. So, and we'll keep up only up to third order epsilon. So you see that uh, actually second order epsilon, you will ignore third order epsilon. So and now the, for the first term, uh, because you already have an epsilon in front, so that already is first order. So well, you keep one minus epsilon. So we we'll do the expansion of the denominator. You only keep only the decup keep to first order. So one minus five half epsilon multiplied by cosine theta. Okay. And then uh, uh, because we only want to keep up to second order, so we already have first order in here. So in the, in the bracket, we also only need to keep up to first order in epsilon. So we just keep changing the epsilon minus cosine square theta. Okay. Or well, we can formally write this as a plus order epsilon cube. Okay. So so ignoring all the epsilon to the cubic terms and higher terms. Okay, so now you simplify this and uh, just uh, group the, all the epsilon terms together. The epsilon here. So what uh, we group the two epsilon, you have epsilon minus epsilon minus five half epsilon, so we have some one minus seven half epsilon. And the, the second one is, uh, you, I mean, you actually can, well, we, we can do it step by step one, just, Right, that uh, because this is just if linear in epsilon. Okay. Okay, and uh, now you do it one more time. Just. Uh, get everything inside the bracket. And, uh, we actually will move the cosine theta inside. I mean, the, the reason to write it that way is just to compare with uh, the, later on compare with the agenda polynomial, okay? So when you multiply this inside the first term, cosine theta times one, which is this one, so, and then uh, the epsilon terms, we have just uh, this this terms my, my plus this this term, so the sec the, in the epsilon uh, terms so you have a minus seven half cosine theta, and then plus uh, thirty five of a twenty four times. You multiply cosine theta as so a three cosine theta minus cosine cube theta. Okay. And then uh, you, you just uh, keep it like this and you don't multiply this to get to get the epsilon square because this epsilon square will multiply by this we can become epsilon cube so you just ignore all the epsilon cube terms epsilon okay now uh, the final step is just to uh, recognize the form is this similar to the what we call the legenda polynomial 
the first term is already the, the first the gender polynomial, which is just cosine theta. And the second one will be to get the, the gender polynomial, we actually end up multiply by, pull out the 12 factor out, okay? And what you have is here, so the first term actually is uh, the, the cubic term. Cubic term, you have 35 for 24. After you post seven over 12 out, you get five over two. Okay, five over two. Cosine cubic theta. And then the cosine theta term, you have a, uh, but you need to simplify this first, so. So that will be, uh, you have a three here, so you have a six over 34, so six, and then you have seven, okay. Uh, so, actually, because you are pulling out uh, 12 out, so this becomes a uh, two, this is 35 or two, and pull out seven, five or two, so you have five or two. Uh, I should actually just write when you pull out uh, a seven over minus seven over twelve. So what you get the first term is plus uh, uh, seven over six. First one is six, and then you minus this one. When you pull out twelve, you get two and five. Five times three is 15 over two cosine theta. I simplify that, this becomes two of uh, minus two. This is this minus 12, minus three half, okay. So five half cosine cubic theta minus three half of cosine theta. So that would be the so-called the third uh, third order order the gender polynomial. So you have p one or p sub one. This become p sub three. Okay, and and so that's uh, another way to get the solution. It, in the expansion of a square over x square, so you get this, this expansion. Of course, uh, again, we only have the second uh, up to two terms, and you need more higher order terms. And there's another way to solve this problem: we give you all the order. So using the gender polynomial, which uh, we'll do, we can do that uh, later. So that will be all for this section.